Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the dicot stem. So let us see how the dicot stem, how much difference is there in the dicot stem from the monocot stem. So here again, uh, we will try to draw a rough figure and then see how it looks like. So here again in a dicot stem, the outermost layer as usual is going to be the epidermis. Just below the epidermis, you have hypodermis and here again you can see another layer called endodermis. So these three layers are common again in case of a dicot stem. Now what about the vascular bundles? Where do we have the vascular bundles? So here also we will see that the vascular bundles are in a scattered form. However, the pattern of the vascular bundle is little different than that of the monocot stem. Let us have a look. So here we see this is the pattern of the vascular bundle. So if you look at it very closely, you see that the vascular bundle is arranged in a ring pattern. So if you see it is a ring pattern, right? the vascular bundle. So this is your xylem and this is phloem and they together constitute the vascular bundle which is in a ring pattern. Now another important thing to notice here is that cambium is present here. So what is cambium? So cambium is the meristematic layer of cells between xylem and phloem. So here I am marking it as yellow. So here you have a layer of cells which is cambium. So this yellow colored cell is nothing but cambium. So this cambium is responsible for the formation of secondary xylem and secondary phloem and which in turn is responsible for secondary growth. So this is nothing but a, med a metastomatic tissue. Because of this, the stem becomes wider and wider. Because they are capable of cell division, they can form new xylem and phloem cells. Right? So this is another very noticeable difference in case of a dicot stem. Now what happens to all the open spaces which is present here? You have so much of open spaces right inside. So what happens to that open spaces? That open spaces is again filled up by the parenchyma cells which are again used for food storage and support. Right? Now again what about the pith? That is the central region. The central region is also made up of parenchyma cells. So the pith is made up of parenchyma So this will be somewhat like this. So these are the parenchyma cells. So they actually fill the entire empty space which we can see right now. So now from this picture it becomes very clear that the parenchyma cells are indeed the packing tissue. They fill up all empty space and packs everything up. So here you can see the pith which is nothing but the parenchyma cells. Right, so this is the structure of dicot stem. Let us have a quick review. So this is how it looks like. A side view of the same thing. It has epidermis followed by a hypodermis which is made up of colenchyma cells to provide strength. In case of monocot uh, stem, the hypodermis was made up of sclerenchyma but here it is made up of colenchyma so the dicot stem will have some flexibility as well. Cortex is nothing but the parenchyma cells plus the endodermis as I mentioned this before also. Parenchyma cells plus endodermis together form the cortex. Next is pericycle which is patches of sclerenchyma cells and vascular bundles. Here the vascular bundles are conjoint and open because cambium is present so they are open. Vascular bundles are in ring arrangement as I showed you in the previous slide. Vascular cambium is also present. 
Now here you see we were till now we were just talking about cambium, cambium, cambium. Now later as we go ahead, we'll see that cambium is also of two types vascular cambium and cord cambium so right now since we are talking about the cambium between xylem and phloem which are the vascular tissues that is why this is our vascular cambium now what is cord cambium that we will discuss little later then you have the pith which is made up of parenchyma cells with large intercellular spaces so basically this is the structure of the dicot stem so now that we have studied both dicot stem and monocot stem, let us have a quick comparison between monocot and dicot stem. So when we talk about a monocot stem, epidermal hairs are absent. You do not have the hair-like structures on the epidermis, whereas they are present in dicot stem. Hypodermis, hypodermis is clerenchymatous in monocot stem, whereas it is cholenchymatous in dicot stem. Bundle sheath is present. In monocot stem, the vascular bundles are just scattered all around. It is not in a specific pattern. And they each of the bundle is surrounded by a sclerenchyma tissue which is called bundle sheath. But bundle sheath is not present in dicot stem. Monocot stem, not much differentiation in ground tissue. So the ground tissue is basically, the entire ground tissue is made up of parenchyma cells that's all you do not have a separate cortex you do not have a separate endodermis uh, so not much of differentiation is there whereas in dicot stem it is well differentiated because you can see a distinct hypodermis a distinct cortex a distinct endodermis a distinct pericycle and pith so everything is distinctly seen in case of a dicot stem so we can say that the ground tissue is well differentiated here uh, in the monocot stem, the vascular bundles are conjoined and closed. I mean, it is conjoined in both monocot and dicot stem. But in here it is closed because there is no um, cambium present. Whereas in dicot stem, it is open because vascular cambium is present there. In monocot stem, phloem parenchyma is absent, whereas in dicot stem, phloem parenchyma is present. Secondary growth doesn't occur in monocot stem, most importantly, whereas secondary growth occurs in dicot stem. And this secondary growth happens due to the presence of the vascular cambium, which later gives rise to secondary xylem and secondary phloem. So with this, we end our discussion on the anatomy of stem. So next is the thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.